Hello, I'm Bronze Age, and today we're going to restore this chandelier to good working order. This is an Italian chandelier. It's a style that was popular in the 30s and then revived back in the 60s and into the 70s. And this was been exposed to a little bit of weather. So it's got some rust stains. But the paint shipped in a few places. The customer in this case wants to uh, repaint it. So all we need to do is get the wiring back into good condition. Make sure that there's no corrosion left behind that could cause problems in the future. First thing to do is to strip the old wire and hardware out of it. One of the problems that comes up with chandeliers which have steel pipes and are exposed to the weather is water will puddle in the low spots and the rust will stick the wires and that can create a real problem at times like this. Usually for this kind of chandelier I wouldn't take the arms off because it's easy to get to each end for the wires. But in this case, we're going to have to be able to hold this thing very firmly because it's going to take a lot of force to get these out of this pipe. And the reluctant arm gets the evapo rust bath. just enough to cover it. Try to weight it down so make sure that's the low spot. Let that sit probably overnight and it should wash out and be free in the morning. Thankfully, not all of the arms are stuck. In fact, it looks like only one, yes. and the odds were just against us for uh, picking that one first. Now we activate the lab's arm vise right here. hold of this. Now we're going to turn our attention back to the reluctant arm and see if we can work on getting 
the wires free. Because in this situation, just about the worst possible thing that can happen is to break these wires off inside the arm. Because that requires a fishing expedition that just takes nothing but time. Oh, those were really stuck. I think it's got to go back into the soup for a while. Maybe just let it sit overnight. Probably be the best thing for it. The sockets that came out of the chandelier are the familiar socket and bulb that's in most lamps and light fixtures in the United States. And this is known as the E26 bulb and socket. E stands for Edison, and the 26 stands for 26 millimeters. Now, this particular design of thread and socket was patented in 1890. So I can't tell you why it's the only metric thing that's in America today. But that's the way it works. Now, this particular design has the wires soldered into the bottom of the socket. And experience tells me that after a socket's been wet, the solder itself will continue to deteriorate until one day it's just gonna simply break and the light quits working. So anytime there's any sign of water damage, having been left out in the rain or whatever, it's just the best thing to do is just to throw it away. Now this particular socket has a little piece of hardware on the bottom of it called a hickey. And I like the E26 bulb. I can't tell you why this is called a hickey. I went into one of those uh, full service hardware stores one time. They were the kind of hardware store that uh, when Home Depot opened up, they realized they either had to go big or go home. So they went really big. And they had a nice selection of uh, lamp hardware. I walked in there and Young lady behind the counter says, can I help you? I says, I'm looking for lamp parts. And she says, well, what do you need? I can help you with that. And I said, do you have any hickeys? And she turned red, pulled her collar closed and said, why do you want to know that? Okay. Anyway, we're not going to use hickey sockets on this. We're actually going to use a similar kind of socket, which has this plate on the bottom of it and the same threads that fit into the pipe. The only real reason for that is because I do have five of these, I only have two of these. It's pretty rusty in here. And I've soaked the hickeys and some penetrating oil for a while. And so they come out without too much trouble. That's what it looks like. Oh, that's going to be thrown away. And the new socket will fit down there just fine. Screw down on that little pipe nipple. And of course, according to the rule of one, there's always one it wants to be difficult but after extra doses of penetrating oil even that one has given up I think it's about to come loose oh, there we go well sort of dodged a bullet on that one There we go. This piece is made of wood. So fortunately, none of them have split or broken because of being out in the rain. In most applications, you can make sure that the uh, plate socket stays tight by this screw on the side. But because of the candle cup, we're not going to be able to use it. 
So what we have instead is the blue thread bonder. The first thing goes down is a, a steel nut. And that should hold it nice and tight. And if all goes well, this wire will slip all the way through without giving us any trouble. Just a little less trouble than anybody expected. And so, well, we're in good shape. Now that's a good bit more wire than I need, but nobody ever saved time or money by cutting a wire short. Okay, we have one left to go here. each one and strip it back This is the last one. Let me give them all a tight twist. When strand wire is going to be put underneath contact screws like this, it has to be soldered on the end so that it doesn't fray out and get loose. Because what will happen is a loose connection gets hot hot connection burns the wire and while it's very unlikely it's going to set anything on fire at least right here is it will burn out light bulbs much sooner because the socket gets hot and then it'll just quit working all together if there were only one wire to, to, to uh, solder I'd use a soldering gun but for doing an entire chandelier we have this little stove which will heat up small pot of solder and we'll dip all the wires. And that's it. It can be quite aggravating to get the screws started four to go. While I'm doing this, the solder is heating up. Most of the time, when you have a chandelier like this, 
inside this connection you'll find sometimes just tape usually wire nuts which are plastic pieces that go over the ends of the connection but in the secret underground laboratory all connections are soldered because there's really just no way that you can lie on it well into the future if you don't I have seen plenty of chandeliers where one light didn't work when we checked them out there's really nothing wrong with them except that one wire out of the bundle where they were all joined together just simply wasn't making contact that's probably because there was a little bit of corrosion on it when it was new when it was put together and it just sat there and you give anything 30 or 40 years and it will finally give out on you so that's just one problem that we can eliminate right off the bat and this is the trunk wire put it on there I'll do the other side and it's ready for the solder Last step is to assemble the lower end, which calls for a little more thread lock. This piece is made of wood and it's the same thing as what's on the arms. Now all we have to do is put some light bulbs in it, plug it in, and test it to make sure everything works. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll have more videos coming out soon.